What's up? This is Tony. Hey, I'm Ryan. And we're from Iron Radian. Mm -hmm. And you're watching Brutally Delicious. It's brutally Delicious. It's just what it says. Hey, welcome to Brutally Delicious. I'm Bruce Moore. Today we've got another great show in store for you. This time, I'm going to be joined by Paul Allender of White Empress. And if you stay tuned, we're going to see what Paul has cooked up for us today. Hi, this is uh, Paul from White Empress, and Brutally Delicious have asked me to take part in one of their episodes to cook. So I thought, stuff it, why not? So I decided to make um, cherry burgers with um, cherry tomato, well, cherry ketchup, wouldn't be cherry tomato ketchup, would it, for God's sake? But yeah, cherry ketchup, and uh, basically what we've got for the cherry ketchup is um, a whole bunch of uh, frozen cherries, dried cherries, as well as we've got, like, we've got um, garlic, we have cayenne, uh, cinnamon, cardamom, and uh, ginger in there. It, though these are usually a sort of about an eighth of a teaspoon for for the uh, ketchup. And basically, we've got um, a third of a cup of water and half a cup of cider vinegar to go in there. So basically, all you really got to do for this is throw the water in and all this lovely stuff. Oh, and also instead of um, using sugar, I used um, honey. Don't know what that's going to taste like, but we'll find out, won't we? So all you've got to do is bring this to the boil for about 15 minutes and just get it into a mush. Just make sure it's all separated. Bring it onto the boil. Then once the, uh, all the fruit's cooked, and then we're going to blend it all together. But be careful of hot liquids, kids. Okay, so now the uh, the cherries and all the lovely juicy ketchup stuff, see, has actually become a mess, which is very good. So what I'm gonna do now is put it into the, the uh, ginger container and then uh, blend it up and stand aside and then we'll get cracking on the burgers. So that goes in there. Make sure it's around the blades. Don't get the spoon. Blend it up into loveliness. So far that's got. Oh yes. Cherry ketchup, can't be bad. Just, I'm only going to start, I'll usually leave it in there to cool. Just so you can see what it looks like. There we have, can you see that? Cherry ketchup. White Empress was put together about what about three years ago, three three and a half years ago now, possibly a bit longer. Um, it was put together because I wanted to come up with something that was a bit different for the scene. Um, I spent quite a few years trying to find something in a band that I was really into. You know, I really like all the real heavy groove stuff and the well, the White Empress music, and <clears throat> and I couldn't find anything. There was always bands that that all that had specific sections or particular sections that I was really into. Then, it, for me personally, then it just went really lame when they when they comes around for the like the next riff that comes in. You know, um, but I wanted to create a band that had all those really like cool parts all the time. Um, and so hence the reason why, why Empress came around. Um, and then from like, once everything was put together, I mean, long story short, once everything was put together and uh, we had the material, or I had the material, um, and then decided to uh, 
turn it into a proper band and get members involved. But I wanted to get members involved that are really cool people, that are absolutely 100% love what they do for, uh, for, for playing wise, uh, top of their game, and the, the, the most important thing was they had to be like really, really good people. And so therefore, like, you know, I was put in contact with Mary. Um, she's awesome. Hands down, one of the best vocalists I've ever, play, ever played with. Um, she, she was, the way her vocals are, she's ideal for the band. Um, and then there's a the cello on bass. <clears throat> Everyone else I've got a contact with through, through Mary and her contacts. Cello was on bass, yet again, another awesome player. You know, she uh, originally came from Cold Chamber. Um, and she's like, she's, she's so down to earth, it's incredible, you know. Uh, any, all, all the band members are like basically my best friends. Um, then we have like Jeremy on guitar, yet another cool dude. Um, phenomenal player again. Um, we've got, um, this time, we've got a guy called uh, Adam on drums. You know, he's session for us at the moment. Um, but he's a phenomenal drummer as well. Um, with, uh, and then there's Will on keys. Um, Will started basically White Emperors. I, I contacted Will and we basically put our heads together and pretty much got White Emperors off the ground. Um, and with his keys and like, my riff writing and, and arranging ideas and stuff, it works really, really well. You know, once everybody else came in, I've got everybody to put their own like um, ideas into it as well. Um, but I know for like the next album when that comes around, everybody's writing everything together as a band. This time around, it was mainly just me and Will um, because uh, just the nature of the beast. The band's got to start somewhere, you know. But the next one's going to be a full band effort. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's an awesome album. It's an awesome first album, you know. Um, there are some bits I would change to it, listening back to it now, you know. Um, some of the uh, arrangements I would change. Um, but all in all, it's a, I think it's an awesome first album, you know. Uh, hence the reason why I said before about the, the when, when we come into our second album, uh, it's going to be like a band effort, and that's when we, that's when the band's really going to shine. Because then everybody's got their own their inputs into it. Everybody's influenced the way the songs are going. It's not just down to one person, and that's what I'm really really looking forward to. So all we have is um, good old ground beef that goes in there, and plus also for the meat we have a uh, Dijon mustard. Um, Himalayan salt and pepper. That goes in there. I have washed my hands actually, so don't worry about that. Then also we've got um, this. What is this? Oh, balsamic vinegar. <laughs> balsamic vinegar. And uh, what's this one? That one is actually um, Worcestershire sauce. And then also garlic, that goes in the bowl, as well as a cup of dried cherries, that goes in the bowl, as well as a cup of whole wheat breadcrumbs, that goes in as well. And there's the fun parts, get rid of these. And all you've got to do with this, is just mush it all together. That's the beef mixed. That's all we need for that. The onions, I will... Uh, I'll just brown them for the burgers. For the burgers, um, they only need like, on a high um, broil or a grill, they only need about um, six minutes each side. It, it, basically, you need a thermometer to make sure it can reach 160 degrees centigrade inside the meat at a rapid, at a rapid increase. Um, I've always taken advantage of technology. Um, <clears throat> Because the way I write, I usually like come up with riffs against the drum beat in Pro Tools, and then I'll, I'll come up with ideas, and then I'll structure, and then restructure, and then rearrange, and rearrange, and just keep going until it actually all comes together. Um, there's um, then, uh, then the arrangements will go after the drummer, the drummer will like program MIDI ideas for it, send it back to me, and I'll use Superior Drummer to, to come up with like the ideas for the drums and where they need to go, etc. Um, that's how it was done before, um, and this is how the first album was done. And then I got other band members to put 
the, the influences and ideas into the first album. But the next one, we're going to be writing together. You know, but I do believe everybody's got to come up with their ideas uh, before entering the rehearsal room because the way I do it at the moment is super productive. You know, you don't waste rehearsal time, you don't waste time sitting staring at the floor, and then every band member is kind of forced to, to basically do their homework um, and come up with ideas. But with Emperors, oh, I have no worries with with anyone doing like not putting their weight because they're so super keen and eager for this to work. You know, like I said, I'm in a band with one of my best friends and it's awesome but you know so but the next one it will be like a joint effort in a room but we'll still be sharing um, riffs and stuff like that uh, across the internet and I'll still be putting it together in in uh, Pro Tools but then when we get to rehearsal room but this will be with everybody else's ideas as well not just mine and so when we get to rehearsal room we can like mess around with it play around with it and actually form it into tracks is and how is how our bands are meant to work. Alright what I'm gonna do now what I'm gonna do is actually grease this a little bit first. Just with a bit of butter. Just so it doesn't stick. This is old fashioned, this is. My mum used to do this with lard. Now with the patties, they've got to be... Patties, we're going to try and get four patties out of this. There it is. They've got to be about... About an inch thick, or oh, sorry, actually a half inch thick. It's my bad. Make it about half inch thick. A bit more in there. Make it as round as possible, but indent the middle as well. The, the in, if you indent the middle, you're guaranteed it's going to cook all the way through properly, evenly as well. So there's one. Good thing about using uh, cherries in the burger, it actually reduces the fat of the meat and adds antioxidants to the burger, so it's awesome for training food. In the middle there, okay, so you've got those. Tissue. And now it's six minutes each side under the, under the grill or broil, whichever you want to call it. So it's over here, put it under there. And then we'll see what they like and when, after 12 minutes. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> there you go. The personal, I haven't really got any personal favourites as such. You know, because I really like all of them. But in saying that, I, I, re I really like um, Darkness Encroaching, the track on there. That's really good. That was the first video we had out. Um, and also, uh, I'm really into like, a lot of the congregation. Is, you know, the way it starts and the way it comes in is really good. But each track on there is like, is awesome as far as I'm concerned and you really need to go and buy it. Um, not at all. To be honest, I hated playing festivals. You know, uh, for me, there's no atmosphere on stage. It's, it, you've got such a huge gap from the stage to the audience, you just feel totally isolated and I can't, I just really don't like festivals full stop. Um, I much prefer the smaller gigs, uh, anywhere between 200 to 500 capacity people, or even a thousand people in a small, in a, like a venue, you know. Uh, indoor shows are definitely where it's at, with no air conditioning on, just get up there, sweat your nuts off, and then just go and basically play it, and it's, it's so intimate. You know, you feel the vibe from the crowd and you can put a vibe back and that's what I prefer. You know, even like really tiny club gigs, like 50 people, it's, it's freaking awesome. I absolutely love it. So now while the burgers are going, just brown the onions. Just for to put on top of the burger. 
And I've also got uh, cherry tomatoes as well. Just put on there, but I'm gonna blitz these first while the burger's going. There's not really much, I've always been the, the freaking mature sane one on, on tour. I've never been the one to go off and play stupid pranks. Um, Cause I've always treated it, um, any, all, all of my playing and touring and gigging, I've always treated it like my business, as in which it is. You know, um, there's obviously there's people that I've been on tour with, you know, and various bands that, have, that, have, that do this type of stuff. But I'm not, I'm not a one to put myself in that position to like, I made a be made a fool out of, or B to just just go do it. I've always been into like working full time all the time and pushing the band forward, no matter which one I'm in, just to, to, to the fullest I can possibly take it. I'm just gonna put some little cherry tomatoes on top of the bun. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I just like, don't want the taste of them. I don't really want those massive, great big, big beef tomatoes because they're just a bit too big. But if you're into that, you can do. Obviously, it might help if I had a sharp knife as well. <laughs> There you go, all you've got to do is just drop it, and it stays on there. Push it down, that's one, two, three, and... Cherry burgers. It's actually homemade cherry ketchup. There's cherries in the burger, full of antioxidants, less fat, also for gym food. Bottoms up. Good stuff. Yeah, I know something. I don't have an iPod. <laughs> Simple as that. I don't. I don't go around and listen to the music. On I don't because I play it all the time. And I want to distance myself from it when I have downtime. You know I don't listen to an iPod or anything like that. I mainly watch films. I watch films all watch pretty much as much as I possibly can. Um, Cause I, that's, I'm really into like video stuff and all that, so I, I love watching films. But for an iPod, I don't have one, so therefore I can't answer that. <laughs> uh, some of my favourite films are, I like the supernatural horror stuff. You know, Annabelle was a good one. I like, like that stuff. Uh, Insidious, those two two were really good. Um, I like uh, sci-fi stuff as well, which is pretty cool. Sci-fi horror stuff. You know, that's, that's, that's really good stuff. I mean, my, my all-time favourite film is Nightbreed. Um, but that's nothing really new, because everybody knows that. <laughs> it's not fun to a dying, and you would want us more. 
First one would be I'm a peace of mind. Uh, Judas Priest, uh, Defenders of the Faith, and Motorhead. Oh, pretty much any Motorhead album, really, to be honest, because I love it all. But also, I have to have something to play with it because I don't use an iPod. So, how's that going to work on a desert island? The first record I ever bought my own money was uh, Iron Maiden's The Trooper. It was a single picture disc. It was a cut picture disc, actually, single. And uh, I remember seeing that I was walking, I must have been, what, 12? 12 at the time? And I remember walking up the high street, and uh, at that time, the, all the shops had, uh, like, all the, the records and everything were, like, nailed on the walls outside, on a lot of display, all over the walls outside the shops. Um, this is where people didn't really steal stuff. And so, that was all around there, and that's when, like, the, the metal scene was really rocking. And, yeah, I saw that, and it was the picture. It was the actual image of the, the, the picture, which I was like, oh, that's a really cool fucking... You know, that was a really cool image and it, that, that made me like go in and buy it. And I had this really crappy old like, it was like a gramophone <laughs> for like a record player. So I put it, go and put it on and that was it. From that point onwards I was convert and I've been like it ever since. Then. Bank of Spider. That was, uh, oh, crikey, that was a long last time ago. It was in like so early 80s. And that was, uh, they basically just sounded like status quo. And one of my friends, that was my first ever show. And I walked in there and there was people with studs on and there was like leather jackets and denim stuff, patches smelling of like all kinds of stuff. And we went, and I remember going in there and I saw all these guys like putting like the middle finger up and like the, the two fingers up to this band. I was like, oh, perhaps that's what you're meant to do. Right, so I started doing it and I remember the bass player looked at me and basically threatened me. <laughs> and I must have been about 12. <laughs> Pretty much crap myself to be honest. <laughs> that off the top of my head I really don't know. Because um, I've seen, even before I turned like a professional player, I ended up going to well, Maiden, Saxon, Motorhead, Aussie, freaking Dio, Priest, you name it, all of the above. You know, so other it's it, it was one of those. <laughs> what kind of impact did they have on you? Oh a huge impact. Had a massive impact on me. You know, I, I remember seeing it was like this is what made me wanna play in a band. When I, I remember seeing Maiden and I was like from right the second when I when I went into the, the venue and then they came on and when I left the hairs were constantly standing up on the back of my neck. It was absolutely freaking, I was getting shivers up my spine the whole time. You know, and then I thought that's going to be cool if you could do something like that, you know. And hence that's the reason why I'm here, I'm here now. Because, and hence the reason why I'm doing Empress, because like Empress makes me feel like I did when I went to that maiden show. Good Maiden, <laughs> Adrian Smith. <laughs> it was yeah, it was totally his fault. <laughs> Absolutely, I remember jumping up and down in my bed when I was younger and uh, playing air guitar to like Aces High and all this sort of stuff. You know, um, the Trooper especially. And then when I got, then once I got the the uh, the Trooper single, then I went and bought like Peace of Mind. Then I went and got all the back catalogue. And yeah, it was like Number of the Beast and it was like. It, yeah, it completely changed everything for me. Yeah, I've always been into, you see, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person, I'm, I'm never the one just to go, oh yeah, that'll do. You know, I've never ever been like that. I always push something until, until there's absolutely nowhere else you can take it, no matter what it is. Um, so I kind of, and plus also it was the harmonies and the melody lines and all this sort of stuff that Maiden did that really got me hooked. Um, but yeah, it's, they, 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 they definitely, definitely, absolutely hands down changed my life for, for the good. Um, shows. Uh, I'm not going to exactly say where they are because I don't like telling people stuff before it happens um, in case it falls through. But um, we've got possibly 
going out of, out of the country in uh, May. That's about 80% there have been sorted out. And then there's also one in uh, June as well. That's, that's, that's been sorted out at the moment. You know, we've got a booking agent now who's like frantically working on um, like getting us tours and shows and festivals in, in Europe, the smaller festivals I might add, which will be good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's working frantically, you know. Um, there's, and we're just going to be this year is like hit the road as hard as possible so everyone can like come and see us play. Because at the end of the day, I mean, Empress, when I put it together, um, it's, it's written for life. I wrote it solely for life. You know, the album's great for it to listen to, but in live is where it's at. And um, we, we, we are a live band, you know. And then once we decide to, once it gets out there and people see them, they'll actually know what I'm talking about. Even the people that came and saw on those three Halloween shows we did, um, they were completely blown away. It was awesome. It was really, really good. Oh, you can go on uh, our Facebook page, which is basically White Empress, um, or you can go to uh, whiteempress.com. Uh, there's the whole album streamed on there. Um, there's information about us on there, but most of the most of it's between Facebook and our um, our website. But from the website, you can go to like all the Twitters, the Instagrams, and all that stuff. But yeah, we're out there. You just got to go. Once you can find it, you you you're glad you did. YouTube, we've got videos up on YouTube as well, a live video and a, and a normal studio video as well. So yes, yes, go check it out. Whiteempress.com or Facebook forward slash Whiteempress.